Here we have an equal slope hip roof. All four sides are the same slope. That makes it equal slope. And in this case, the slope of the roof is 812. We're going to look at the bird's mouth cuts on the hip rafter and a couple different ways of getting the hip rafter in plane with the other rafters on the roof. So here's the bird's mouth cut of a hip rafter. It consists of a plum cut and a uh, horizontal seat cut that's sitting on the plate. When we're laying out the bird's mouth for the hip rafter, we measure the stand on the common rafters or in this case, we're going to measure the hip jack rafter because it's got the same bird's mouth as a common rafter. And we get that vertical height, the stand, and in this case, it's 3 and 15 16 inches. And we use that same dimension, 3 and 15 16 and we lay out the position of the seat cut on the hip rafter. So there's 3 and 15 16 of wood above the plate in both cases. So when we use this measurement, when we make the stand of the hip rafter the same as the common rafter, it puts the center line of the hip rafter in plane. So you can see at the top here that the center, right that point there of the hip rafter is exactly where we want it to be. It's the same level as the top of the common rafter and it's coming right into the corner of the ridge board like that. But the edges are too high. So there are basically two options to get the hip rafter in plane with the rest of the roof. The uh, quickest, most easy way to do it is just to drop the entire hip rafter by how much the edges are too high by. So over here at this corner of the building, this hip rafter has been dropped. So the seat cut has been moved up so the edges are in plane. If you uh, measure the stand at the same spot now, right where the plum cut is. The stand is now three and nine sixteenths of an inch. It's three eighths of an inch less than the stand of the common rafter. If you measure the stand right where it's over the plate though, it will be the same as the common rafters. It's three and 15 sixteenths at this point. So that means it's the same height at that point as all the common rafters. The amount we drop a hip rafter is not always the same. It varies depending on the slope of the roof. There are at least a couple different methods of determining how much the hip rafter is dropped by. I'll show you one easy way a little later in the video. So now when we look at the, the top plumb cuts of this rafter, the hip rafter, we'll see that the center is now too low, but the edges are nicely in plane. The edges are running right into the same height as the common rafters on each side of the hip rafter. So that means when the plywood or the sheathing comes across the common rafters, it's going to be nicely supported by the edges of the hip rafter. It's going to be in the same plane. Over here to the right is a hip rafter that instead of dropping it, we've beveled the top edge on each side of the center line so that it's perfectly in plane with uh, the common rafters to each side of it. This is called backing a hip rafter. It's pretty hard to do if you don't have a table saw on the job site, but uh, if you do, then you just tilt the table saw to the backing angle and you bevel it down each side of the center line. A backed hip rafter looks really nice. The um, top edges are perfectly in plane with the rafters and with the fascia board. The problem is it all gets covered up with plywood later on in construction, so it's not typically done. It's just too much work. Dropping a hip rafter accomplishes the same thing and it's much quicker and easier to do. Now we'll go back over to the first hip rafter we looked at. The seat cut for that hip rafter was laid out using the stand of the common rafter, but we didn't drop it and we didn't bevel it. So the edges are a bit too high. So you wouldn't install this like this, but the tail cut on the end pretty well shows you the amount that it needs to be dropped and even the backing angle you can see there. So if we zoom in a little bit, if you drew a horizontal line right from the corner, right there at the, uh, the end of the hip rafter, horizontally like that, that horizontal line is your backing angle, basically. And that vertical line 
above it is the amount that that hip rotator would have to be dropped to be in plane. There's other ways of doing this, but this is a good way to see it. So that distance there, if we measure that, that's three eighths of an inch. And that's exactly how much we had to drop the other hip rafter to get the edges in plane. And if you tilted a saw so that it started in the middle and followed that horizontal line, that would be the backing angle and it would run parallel all up the edge there like that. So dropping and backing are two ways to get the top of a hip rafter in plane with the common rafters.